Good morning, everyone, again. This is Landscape North. I'm your host, Chris Duncan. I'm here with uh, Mark for Natural Land Signing and Coin Works. Right? with Oak Ridge Landscape Contractors. Um, before we get into the questions, Mark, maybe you can give a little bit of background on yourself and what your company does. Yeah, no, Chris, thank you for having having me on. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, again, Mark Polignato, General Manager of Oak Ridge Landscape Contractors out of the uh, Hampton Mountain area. Uh, we have been in business for about uh, 26 years now. Wow, that's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a long time. Yeah. I have uh, I've been with the company for 19 years. Uh, there's two owners, uh, both Herman Chardulo and Len Polignato, that uh, started the business and uh, have grown it to what it is to this day. Uh, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of it for, for, for 19 years and watch it grow. Nice. Um, a little bit about myself, uh, graduate of Humber College of a uh, landscape technician course. Nice. Uh, I've had a uh, long string of a, a family business that's been in the industry. So uh, I've known uh, one of the owners of this business is, is a family member. And of course, I've known Herman for quite some time. So uh, yeah, so here we are today. And I've been able to grow with the business over the years and over the uh, move up the chain of command. And, and here we are today. Great. Uh, how, many, how many team members? We employ 125 employees wow. in total. Uh, well, that's a challenge. It, it is. <laughs> yes, it certainly is. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll jump right into the questions. Sure. I really appreciate you. You were recommended for the show from uh, Brad Smith from Safarian Designs. Yeah, we do a lot with uh, Safarian. They're great, uh, great landscape architect to work with. Great team of people. So we Perfect. are. Uh, no, I appreciate that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so I just wanted to get your feedback on, from a, a contractor perspective, what trends you see in landscape construction. Uh, uh, quite a few. Uh, what, what we've noticed over the years, and it's, it's, I'm going to kind of direct this towards uh, more of the manpower labor side of things. Sure. Uh, there was a time when we first, or, or years ago, um, I don't want to give away my age here, but there's a, <laughs> <Neither do I. laughs> there was a time where you would be able to take one crew and they would be able to construct an entire job. Right. Uh, we're seeing specialization no different than the me medical field. Somebody is, is a brain surgeon or they're a uh, hip and knee, you yep. know, or, yep. and, and in this case, we're seeing that in the landscape yeah, side that, of things as well. Sense. Yeah. So yeah. we attack a project now, uh, when we set up a job, we do a job project setup, we will look at which components are involved. So in other words, uh, we have carpenters that obviously specialize in carpentry and yep. the wood side of the project. Right. We have stone masons. We have uh, horticulturists that take care of the planting. Okay. So we're seeing a trend where you might have one generic, you'll see a lot of times now there is a lot of uh, project management courses out there sure. within schooling yep. and universities and so on, a lot of education and, and uh, different ways to become a project general project manager. And then from there, we're seeing a lot of uh, specialization in each division. Okay. okay, so we'll take on a project and We'll start perhaps with our earthworks guys, sure. guys that understand the grade elevations, yes. underground sewers and water main, and we'll take that component first, and then we'll switch into our, our concrete crew, let's say, or our hardscape crew, yeah. and then eventually finish a job off with our with our softscape crew, okay. which is um, your sodding and planting. Nice. Uh, but yet have one general project manager oversee the entire thing. That makes a lot of sense. So you get experts working on the, their field instead of right. generalization and That's right. pulled into different directions. It, absolutely. Yeah. And we're finding that a lot of uh, young individuals, uh, they might just want to do stone. And, and that's I like the stone side of things. Right. I like building walls. Yep. I like laying down flagstone or, or putting in interlock. Uh, we don't care too much about the planting. And instead of Fighting that trend, Oak Ridge just looked at it and said, okay, how can this, how can we adapt our business sure. around that? And that's what we've done. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And so that leads into my next question is, um, how do you see your role as a landscape contractor when partnering with landscape architects and designers? Correct. So we, what we do, um, the landscape architect, like a blueprint in a plan is a guide. Okay. And we have found out over the years that everybody makes mistakes. And so what we do is when we take on a project, our role we find is when we encounter issues or problems on a job, we got to keep the open line of communication. Sure. So uh, whether I'm doing a project with Brad or some of the other architects you've spoken with, what we do is we, we try to set up weekly meetings okay. on a job. And uh, whether it be... Uh, 
a $50,000 job up to a $3 million job. We have weekly meetings and we constantly update them with whatever um, issues we may run into on a site and how that might change the overall plan or uh, design that they intend to meet. Sure. And we let them know, listen, here's what we've encountered. We've encountered some issues underground, mate, yep. so be it, sense, yep. whatever it might yep. be. Another thing is, is when we're constructing a park, we have uh, ourselves, but perhaps up to maybe 15 other subcontractors. And uh, listen, we put a plan together, a schedule. We try to ensure that that schedule comes together. Things happen, okay? Mother and nature, snow, exactly. Yep. Uh, he might, uh, a contractor might have a piece of equipment breakdown, or sure. he might have uh, uh, a staff member um, get ill, whatever it might be. And then that changes the whole schedule. Sure. But if we keep that open line of communication with a landscape uh, architect uh, or a consultant for that matter, we sit down and we say, okay, here's what we're looking at. What do you want to do? How, here's what I can propose. Right. And that's where I see, uh, I, I, we find that the relationship has got to be there and the open line of communication is yep. very important. Perfect. Um, now, technology has changed. Our voice, we're, we're videotaping this on a, on a, on a smartphone. That's right. Uh, um, what what has changed on the technology side that has affected or where you see the technology affecting your business? So we all know the challenges of this industry with, with labor and manpower uh, and getting people engaged in landscaping. Um, so what we have done is looked at, we spend a lot of time, uh, members of Landscape Ontario, we spend a lot of time at the Congress show mm. in the equipment section. Right. And that's coming up in January. In January, right. that's yeah. right. So what we do is we, our staff, our managers, uh, we sit back and we know that we're going to spend close to a half a day to a day just in that section of the show. Right. Uh, and we try to capitalize as best as we can. And we turn to these um, manufacturers of these equipment and we tell them the challenges that we're faced with sure. on certain jobs and how can their equipment uh, be modified to help us. Okay. Now, I don't want to give away all our secrets, no. <laughs> no. but we have uh, found that by sitting down with some of these equipment manufacturers, we have uh, come up with certain pieces of machinery that have helped us eliminate labor oh, okay. and increase production sure. um, on, on job sites. Now, um, we all know that um, it's been around for quite, I don't know, 10 years now, but the trend, back to the trends, we see a lot of large slab, paving slabs. Sure. Uh, the smaller sized interlocking stones are seeming to, uh, are starting to weed themselves out, and now you're seeing paving contractors come out with large slabs. Heavy, hard yeah, to lift. Yeah, absolutely. It's so, totally different technology from an insulation standpoint. Exactly. Yeah. So you're seeing suction machines that are being used mm. more often. Yeah. Um, retaining walls, we're finding that you uh, the clamp system are, is now not just compatible with a skid steer, but now it's a mini excavator or another type of machinery. Okay. Um, we're seeing uh, equipment, now houses, the, the trend for houses, at least in the Hamilton area, is the space between houses is tighter and tighter. Sure. Access is very challenging. Yeah. We're seeing some of these uh, skid steer um, uh, manufacturers come out with smaller stand behind machines. And again, yes, they've been around for quite some time, but we're seeing a trend in, in more growth and technology right. in these types. Ones that are able to lift a skid and uh, hmm. a skid of stone or be able to get in and out. We're seeing a lot more use of conveyors uh, when having to excavate and dig out a backyard and remove the fill material. Yeah. Um, Just from an access standpoint, how do you get in? You only get three feet between exactly. the building, right? Yeah, and there was a time where you know you just okay, let's get a bunch of guys, let's get a bunch of wheelbarrows, and, and we're going to dig for two days, and we're going to dig this guy's backyard out. Well, that's that is now starting to bring right. itself out. Well, so. And the more efficient you can be, that means the more projects that you of can course. take on with yeah. the same amount of, of of labor. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, technology that would be on the equipment side now. In house, we've seen technology change. Uh, it's we we don't design uh, our projects in house. Meaning okay. We don't have an in house designer, uh, and, and because of technology, we came up. We went that route, and I'll tell you, uh, we have a number of designers that we work with. Okay. Um, one of them being, and, and some of them are not necessarily even in the province. Wow. So, you photograph a site, 
you measure a site, you shoot the elevations, you send the data to this individual, they come back with a design, and everybody's happy at that point. Um, so we found that technology, thanks to obviously uh, the drawing programs and all these other things, everything nowadays is, is 3D. Um, the, the days of just coming up with a uh, 2D plan drawing, at least I'm speaking more from a residential standpoint, sure. uh, homeowners want to be able to see it. Right. Technology is, is changed. Uh, I'm not a designer and I'm not a specialist in the design field. However, hmm. I've noticed that you're seeing more of a trend towards the 3D design and thanks to the technology, it's easier to send these things and it's, it's quicker. There was a time where 3D drawings would take a long time. Right. Now they're being returned in a few days. Wow. Uh, and and you get into 3D modeling as well? Not so much on our end, but I, I see that is definitely out there. More for maybe on an architect standpoint, yeah. uh, but yes. Uh, you can see even with the architects uh, that we deal with that uh, when they're presenting their project to a client, whether it be a municipality or a developer, there's always 3D renderings of how this thing is going to look when it's constructed. Right. There was, you, you'd never had that 20 years ago, that's right. for sure. So, yeah. yeah, technology has come a long way, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess my last question, mm -hmm. um, or second last question, would yeah. be um, and a, a lot of times because landscaping is done at the end of a project. Yes. Um, and I'm sure you guys have seen it as well, mm -hmm. and value engineered. Yes. So, what the original plan gets scaled back dramatically yes. from a value engineering standpoint. How do you sort of maintain the, you know, what the landscape architect wants, but with those, you know, cost constrictions that are put on from a value engineering standpoint? How do you work with with the shape the shape, the stakeholders to maintain that same vision? Yeah, we we look at the number of different options that are out there. Um, the, yeah, it happens all the time. You you do a design. This is a fancy looking patio. This is a great product. But then you submit the quotation, and the client says, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> okay, what other options do we have?" Right. So then we look at the other options, and we 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 keep them engaged, and we keep them educated that okay. We can kind of still maintain this look, but we got to scale things back sure. to this particular product. Right. So that is, yes, everyone sees the big fancy design. We also, um, we really push uh, phasing a project out. We, mm, okay. So we, we'll meet with a client and we'll, we'll design that dream backyard. I, I, again, just for argument's sake, I'll throw, let's say, $200,000, just as a rough number. And then, of course, it's a dream backyard. It's a dream backyard. And so somebody would look at that and say, wow, okay, I didn't win the lottery, so how do I go about achieving this over the next few years? I'm not moving. Okay. I have no plans to yep. move. So we look at it and say, okay, let's look at year one, two, three, and four. Sure. What has to happen first? Okay, here's what we need to do. Here's what components. Let's get your patio in. But beneath the patio, and maybe let's say these four corners, we might have some sonal tubes or we might have some helical piles that we're going to put in so that when the time comes to want to build that roof structure, right. that's already in. Done. You we're not having the whole thing up exactly. again. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we, we, we walk them through what needs to happen in stages one, two, three, and four and the value of each project so that they can make a plan and budget and, and go from there. Perfect. So okay. hopefully let them know that, okay, listen, Year one's not going to look like this, but maybe in year sure. five or six, we'll get to that look. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and obviously, you've got a tremendous passion for the landscape architecture yes. construction side of the business. If, if you were that young person looking for, hey, what career path do I want to go down? Yes. What inspirational, what advice would you give to that, to that new young person looking at landscaping? <laughs> wow. <Well>, um, <laughs> Find another career. No, I'm just, no, no, I'm just kidding. No, I, uh, I, I would say definitely get, you need to have the education background. Sure. And, and a lot of guys come to us uh, with great passion for whether it be, like I was saying, stone or they love the plant material side of things yep. and planting trees. Uh, but they don't want to go through the education side. Oh, I don't need this. I don't need that. There are some fantastic programs out there, whether it be through college, uh, if they don't want to go to university, yeah. uh, there's two-year college diplomas that are out there that are fantastic. There are... Uh, Humber's got one, Lewis has got one. Fanshawe. Fanshawe, yeah. yeah. There, there are a number at Niagara Parks. Sure. Another great yeah. one. 
So I would advise them to definitely look into that because there's certain things that you're going to learn some of the book's smart side of the industry. Sure. Uh, you're going to learn those Latin names of plant material. You're going to learn why we use certain products. Uh, the field is going to give you that skill and ability to construct something. Sure. But you might not necessarily know why, why am I using silica sand? Why am I using that type of mortar? Why am I using this type of ratio mix of right. mortar? The schooling side of it will educate you enough to show you that this is and teach you this is why we do these things. Um, if the college thing is not something for a young individual, then there's also uh, night courses. There are what we do is again partnered with Landscape Ontario. There are a number of training courses okay. that you can take through the winter. Yeah. Um, some are two day, uh, some are one day, uh, some are an entire week, um, and some are not just related to the construction side. You've got all aspects of our industry. You've got things that are related to the um, softscape side, like maintenance, grass yeah. cutting, turf management, pesticides. Uh, a number of different things. Sure. So I would I would encourage an individual to get some kind of designation, whether whether it be a diploma or a certificate. Um, Landscape Ontario really pushes their certified landscape uh, apprentice pro okay. program. Yep. They're going to teach that person how to properly prune. They're going to teach them how to properly edge, cut grass, use equipment, how to do a proper uh, cutting of stone, proper planting techniques. That's what we need. Sure. Okay. Sure. We we yeah. need to, um, you know. So when that person comes to actually look for a job, that's right. They're going to be a lot it more helps. qualified from from a from an owner standpoint. To Absolutely. Say, I'd, I'd rather take this person than this person. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And then from there, once that individual gets into the uh, gets a job, whether it be with us or any other landscape contractor, and get some field experience to see how things are constructed. Yep. Yeah. And then they still enjoy what they're doing. Then. From that, we, what we do anyways as a, con, uh, as a contractor, we look and speak with that individual. We do a performance evaluation review every year with all our staff. We sit them down and we tell them what they're doing good, where they need to improve, and ask them, hey, what do you like the most what about this? And some guys are going to say, well, you know what, I think I might want to get into pricing jobs. So we'll, we'll turn around and we'll look at estimating programs uh, that they could maybe get registered in that we we help cover some of the funding for that if, especially if they've been with us for quite some time yep. um, some guy might turn around and say like I was saying I might want to be a project manager I want to run the whole job I want to manage all components others might say you know what I just I just want to be a I want to do stone right. well there are red seal courses believe it or not to become stone mason yep, so we then say okay and and very few of them out there that's a, yeah if you're looking for a trade that's a great one to be exactly yep. so it's it's all about people. We are where we are because of the staff that we have. Sure. Um, you know, without them, we couldn't be here. Right. And we got some great people. And what we do is we try to recognize that. And uh, whether it even be their birthday, wish them happy birthday, yep. or, or buy them a coffee, it yep. goes a long way. That's for sure. Perfect. So if there's a young individual out there that's looking to get into this landscape field, I would say look into those programs. Uh, reach out to us or any other contractor out there and uh, let us know what you're interested in and we'll put you on that right path. Perfect. Yeah. Now, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys from, if someone was interested, but just from your website and connection? Website, okay. social media is big. Yep. Uh, we, uh, yeah, web, social media is really taken off. That's something that is we've been... one that you guys monitor the most? Facebook or Instagram or? Uh, no, all, all of them. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah we, we check them all, even LinkedIn okay. uh, is, is another big one as well. Uh, we check all the the message mailboxes to yeah. see because we honestly uh, customers out there they reach to a, reach out to us in all different avenues sure. right so Absolutely. we, we got to check them out Perfect. as much as possible yeah great right. anything else that you want to add to the to the podcast no no I, I appreciate I like the idea of this whole podcast it's it's huge like I was saying social media is becoming so big yeah uh, we we find that it's really helping the growth on the residential side perfect um, not so much for, with us on the, on the commercial Personal side, side yeah. um, you know, we have a, uh, a solid base of clientele on the commercial sure. side and 
you won't see Oak Ridge landscaping on any in a magazine or on a billboard. Right. So what we try to do is maintain the growth of the business through the clientele that we sure. have. Repeat business and referrals. And that's yeah. and I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Some of the guys, uh, some of the architects uh, that we've been able to grow with, uh, we've met through some of these general contractors. Oh, so you okay. you take on a job uh, for a general contractor, yeah. whether it be a developer or a builder or somebody, and they've obviously hired an architect. Yeah. And then you meet that architect and they say, oh, hey, listen, you guys did a great job on this one. I think I, you guys might be okay for this one. And sure. all of a sudden the relationship grows. Yeah. So, um, but no, that's uh, that's pretty much what I had to ask, uh, add. And uh, I'm, I appreciate the opportunity oh, to no speak. Problem. And uh, yeah. yeah. So this will be posted this weekend on LinkedIn, um, my YouTube channel, which is uh, Landscape North on YouTube and on Twitter. So if you've got questions for Mark or comments to make about the podcast, please put them in the comment section below. If you've got questions directly for uh, Oak Ridge Landscape, please find them on social media. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anytime. Good.